can see his, his hesitation in moving that part. It goes for Mori to knee to the body. Decide whether it's a short right hook. The winner by your name. Hello everyone, welcome back to Third Round TKO. I'm your host Tim. I'm joined once again by my co-host Evan. What up? And we're here to break down the Clitson Abreu versus Jamal Hill. Clitson was originally slated to face Gadzimura June 13th in Kazakhstan. It looks like in March he started his training for that fight. Although I think there might have been a time period uh, in between that fight and before this fight was booked that he actually was off training. Hill looks like he's been staying in the gym, even having coaches work his striking in his basement at times. I think he may have been involved in Walt Harris's camp training for Overeem, but I'm not 100% certain. <clears throat> I don't feel like either of these guys have done much in their UFC tenures. Abreu's only victory coming over Sam Alvey, who has now lost four in a row. Hill came off a finish in the Contender Series and won his debut fight against Darko Stosik. Stosik's only win in the UFC came against Jeremy Kimball, who won one out of his, one out of his four UFC fights before being cut. And I think you were saying, Evan, that now Stosik is cut from the UFC as well. So, so, yeah, so it has been released a couple months ago. So I would definitely say that Abreu has fought the better competition. Uh, decision loss to Magomed Ankalaev and a split loss against a tough Shamil Gamzatov. Interestingly enough, Hill is two years older, three inches taller, and has a five-inch reach advantage. <clears throat> Thank you, Evan. How you feeling on this one? Uh, I actually have a bet going here. I have two units on Clitz and Abreu. <clears throat> Just straight up? Yeah, he's straight up. I think uh, his path of victory is a little clearer. If he gets it down, he might only need one takedown. Um, I'm, I'm not sold on Hill. I feel he's kind of like learning as he goes. Yeah, and two years older, that's not yeah. helpful. <laughs> only like eight professional fights. But like you were saying, I think Abreu has had the better competition, even pre-UFC. I feel he's fought the better guys. For what it's worth, he beat Johnny Walker, yeah. braid him wherever you want. Um, but, I mean, he has that kind of lanky striker based kind of like hill different style striking but you know what you're yeah, saying similar um i don't see it being a problem in this fight but hill just doesn't defend left hooks like <laughs> against Stosi, he got hit with like four or five like solid left hooks just the same exact setup so i mean i guess he has a good chin you take that <laughs> out of that yeah um can't defend takedowns either uh Stosic, like, tripped him a few times. Uh, a few double legs, just blast doubles. I think those trips will be more of how Clitson's going to get this down. Kind of rushing him back to the cage and tying him up and then getting that inside trip. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. his game plan yeah. here. Um, Where are you standing? Yeah, Abreu has won the majority of fights via submission, including the John, Johnny Walker win back in 2015, like you said. Um, I think it's worth noting that he was finished by strikes in the third round in two separate fights, but that was pre-UFC. Um, and the guys that he went to decision with in the UFC um, had never been submitted, I'm pretty sure. So Obviously, Hill is undefeated in his professional career. Career He also hasn't been submitted, but there's just not a ton of footage really on what kind of ground game he might be working with. Mm. And uh, obviously, his takedown defense is rather poor. Like you said, the Stosig takedowns were quite a bit different than the way Abreu works his takedowns. Um, I don't think he's the greatest offensive wrestler. He doesn't have very good double legs, but he's very, <clears throat> he's very tricky with those trips, particularly when he can get close, get, get in the clinch. Um, and he'll definitely show that he's not above working in the clinch. I think that would be a pretty bad position for him to be in here. The thing that is kind of makes me feel a bit better about Hill here is that they're both southpaw. Um, in the Alvi fight, Abreu struggled a bit, and I'm assuming that's because he was southpaw. Not that Abreu is the greatest striker, but <clears throat> I think that dynamic just um, kind of like... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's different. different. It throws you off. You get used to fighting mm -hmm. orthodox fighters when you're southpaw because the majority of fighters are orthodox. Exactly. And yeah. so when you go up against the southpaw, um, it can be an interesting dynamic here. Both guys have shown the tendency to switch into orthodox from time to time. It kind of looks like they do it just to throw specific attacks. Abreu throws like a spinning kick, and Hill likes to switch and throw the right the right hand. Um, mm -hmm. Hill showed much worse striking def defense when he switched to orthodox, even though it was very brief. Um, I think that'd be a terrible idea against Abreu, who 
can line up those body kicks um, pretty well. I definitely think Hill is the faster, better, and more active striker. You know, the longer that this can stay on the feet, the more it will benefit him. Um, some stats here. Abreu landed only 13 significant strikes in round one, nine in round two, 14 in round three against Alvi, and 10 in round one, 15 in round two, and seven in round three against Gamzatov. Compared to Hill, he landed 27 in round one, 54 in round two, and 20 in round three when he was taken down four times in that round against Stosik. Um, it's just a much better output. And he definitely slowed in the third round a bit, but he was forced to grapple a lot, and it was his UFC debut, which most fighters underperform. Although he still won the fight, which was good. Um, it seemed like Alvi had more success when he kept it in close and was the one moving forward. I think that if he'll were to enact that game plan, it could help him here. Um, really, it's much harder to get off double legs or uh, to really get into the clinch or to try and get those trips if you're working off the back foot as opposed to being the one pressuring. Um, and Hill has shown an affinity to using knees. He's landed some pretty big knees, both to the body of Popik and to the head of Stosik in their fight, although most of those were partially blocked. Um, I will say, though, that Stosik was able to take him down off one of those knee That's attempts. That's what I was going to mention. I'm afraid you could maybe take advantage of that catching me. Yeah, so I don't know if that will be the, a great idea to to do that. Um, I think Gamzatov was able to beat Abreu at range in more like a standing kickboxing match, just moving on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, so Hill might try to do that as well, but I think using those kicks um, that he likes and staying out of range and moving backwards will, ac will actually benefit Abreu. So I'd like to see Hill keep it in boxing range and move forward. Um, if he gets... If he presses uh, Abreu into the cage, I'd like to see him to break that off pretty much immediately and just not even um, allow him to work those trips. Because even with Abreu's back pressed against the cage, uh, particularly against Ankalaev, he had some real tricky trip attempts. Mm -hmm. um, Ankalaev, good. Like, yeah, I yeah. think all three of those guys are, I'd rate them higher than uh, Hill for takedown defense. I'll yeah, be, and just... Uh, and Ankalaev. Yeah, I definitely would agree. And they're just better mixed martial artists in general. I do think Hill is the better striker out of all of them. He seems to be the most like athletic as far as movement and <clears throat> speed. Um, he doesn't have the greatest striking defense, and he leaves his chin up in the air. But he has shown pretty good defensive vision. One of the issues that I see there is that he moves backwards in a straight line. Um, mm -hmm. So if he doesn't have enough space, it could help Abreu just press him into the cage. That's yeah. <clears throat> so, um, any other things you'd like to point out on this matchup? Uh, maybe just Abreu's last fight before USC over in M1. He fought like a, a similar height, reach guy in a uh, Antone. I can't even say his last name. Some <laughs> Russian dude. He's like six five. Now a heavyweight. So, like he's big. Has that same like build as a uh, Jamal Hill. And Abreu took him down like four times. Finished him in the second armbar or something so like yeah i don't see the height reach being that big of an issue yeah particularly with um a bra a brave style sometimes being that shorter guy can actually help you get in underneath and work mm -hmm. those takedowns exactly. so you put a bet here straight up I, yeah, that I means you're assuming that um, you're assuming a is going to be able to take him down and i think yeah i got second round submission it. if i had oh, to well. pick a specific method okay yeah i, I just got him straight up at plus i think i got it at plus 115 i waited a little too long he was like plus 135 when i started eyeing it yeah um i just i don't think i can really trust abreu or a hill here um, i can definitely see abreu losing a kickboxing match just by being the less active fighter he's also shown at times that he doesn't show the greatest urgency to try to get the fight to the ground um if he doesn't try to shoot those takedowns early and often, then, you know, I think Hill can win the first couple and potentially yeah. survive. Very well could. But for me, yeah, it's going to boil down to whether Bray can take Hill down. If he can take him down, if he'll be able to keep him there and control him. And if he can control him, if he'll be able to submit him. I think I'm leaning Hill. I'm just, I mean, obviously I'm not very certain. I think this one's pretty close to 50-50. Um, I'm looking for him to keep it on the fight the majority of the, keep it on the feet the majority of the fight. Work the body of Abreu. 
hopefully keep it in boxing range and uh, win by decision. But I think that um, Abreu definitely has a good path to victory here. Yes, sir. Well, there's a breakdown of uh, Cleats and Abreu versus Jamal Hill. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video once again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <clears throat> Leave a comment down below with who you think is going to win the fight. And uh, check back. We're going to be putting out our full DraftKings slate breakdown as soon as salaries are released. And uh, we'll be coming back with more full fight breakdowns. I think the next one up is going to be... Um, Roosevelt Roberts. Brock yeah, Weaver. Roosevelt Roberts versus Brock Weaver. So check back for that scrap. within the next couple days. Yeah, it should be a real good scrap. Thank you once again, Evan, for uh, joining me early here to record the vid. You got it. Thanks for having me. And uh, check back soon for the next video, guys. Thank you so much. Well, you can see his hesitation in moving that pocket. It goes for Maury to knee to the body. Decide whether it's a short right hook. The winner, by your name.